Taylor Swift leaves Caesars Superdome after finishing her first concert in New Orleans. On Friday night, October 25th, Taylor Swift took the stage for her first concert at Caesars Superdome in New Orleans. However, after the end of the show that lasted more than three hours, Taylor Swift waved to her fans in New Orleans as she left Caesars Superdome at Swift's first concert in New Orleans. Fans saw Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds cheering on Taylor Swift's concert, Travis Kelsey was seen walking with Ross Travis into the lobby of Caesars Superdome in New Orleans. Travis Kelsey appeared in a gray hoodie and a white t-shirt underneath and he was wearing dark brown pants standing next to Taylor Swift's tour sign in the dome lobby. An eyewitness said that Travis Kelsey's friend Ross Travis appeared in a black t-shirt and a white hat, after taking a few photos, the two went inside the VIP tent at the dome, Travis Kelsey showed his support for his girlfriend Taylor Swift while Kelsey was only two days away from the Chiefs vs Las Vegas Raiders game, due to his busy schedule. Kelsey will only attend Taylor Swift's first concert and then he will return to attend the Chiefs vs Raiders game on Sunday, at the time of recording. Thousands of fans from all over were lining up outside the Caesars Superdome Stadium to attend Taylor Swift's concert, before the concert, the appearance of Travis Kelsey also made the fans dance with joy because this was sure to be a very exciting night at Caesars Superdome. Before that, Patrick Mahomes' teammate Kelsey hinted at Kelsey's appearance at Taylor Swift's concert in New Orleans. Not only that, just a few hours ago Kelsey also had an interview when asked about Taylor Swift. With a happy smiling face, Kelsey talked a little about Taylor Swift, Kelsey expressed his joy every time he went to Taylor Swift's concert. He was not only excited by Swift's songs but also excited by the lively atmosphere of the fans at Swift's concerts, Travis Kelsey is really a sincere and lovable person, he always devoted his sincerity to supporting his girlfriend Taylor Swift. It's those simple things about Kelsey that really win fans' hearts. Kansas City Chiefs linebacker Travis Kelsey is focused on beating the Las Vegas Raiders in Week 8. After a quiet performance in the Chiefs' 28-18 win over the San Francisco 49ers last week, in which Kelsey recorded four receptions for 17 yards, he may be looking to make a statement against Las Vegas. Kelsey's girlfriend, Taylor Swift, will not be able to attend Sunday's AFC West game. Although the 34-year-old pop star is scheduled to perform on her era's concert tour in New Orleans that night, she will be supporting him in spirit. Just before Swift kicked off her first performance at the Caesars Superdome, a report surfaced that the celebrity couple is ready to take the next big step in their relationship. They liked the idea of saving a cat's life and knew there were a lot of people in need. A source told the news agency. They love to pet the cats together. They love to cuddle them, and Travis has set up all sorts of scratching posts in the house for them, he's always buying them new toys and is even planning on building them a cat playground so they can go outside and play without worrying about them getting lost or worse. Swift is already the proud mother of three cats, Meredith Grey, Olivia Benson, and Benjamin Button. While Kelsey doesn't currently own a cat, he and his brother Jason had one when they were younger. Swift has performed in places as far away as Paris, Australia, Singapore, and Brazil. But for these fans, the New Orleans show is special, it's one of the last. The era's tour wraps up in Vancouver this December, this weekend, New Orleans will likely be packed with so many celebrants that none of them are thinking about the end. Caesars Superdome, where Swift will perform, has hung a long inflatable friendship bracelet the 140-foot stand looked like it was made of bracelets that fans collected and traded. Fans had guesses about which celebrities would appear, Lana Del Rey and her new husband, a Louisiana Swamp Tour guide, perhaps? Merchandise was on sale. Hotel rooms were booked. Swift-themed lunches, brunches, dinners, cocktails, parties, bars, Halloween decorations and riverboats were taking place. South Mississippi fans were frantically hunting for tickets. Moran bought a resale ticket for more than the price of a ticket to see Swift in Milan, Italy, where she also visited last summer. Delphine Shannon, a doctor in Gulfport, saw Swift in Nashville last year and miraculously got a floor seat in New Orleans. Chrislyn Branford, 
who serves in the Air National Guard in Gulfport, was deployed when tickets went on sale but also got a floor seat through a friend. Newell's father surprised her and her mother with the tickets recently, with a perfect record in Allegiant Stadium, which includes last season's Super Bowl championship, the Chiefs feel right at home in Las Vegas, and although he has not played in the stadium yet, so will rookie safety Jaden Hicks. Hicks hails from Las Vegas, a proud graduate of Bishop Gorman High, and this weekend returns to his hometown. He's coming off his most eventful game of the season in the Chiefs' victory at the San Francisco 49ers, it didn't start great. Hicks, an up-back on the punting team, took a snap on the team's first fake of the season. He needed two yards, with the middle clogged, he got one, but later in the game, Hicks' interception of Brock Purdy in the end zone helped seal the Chiefs' 28-18 triumph, on that play, Hicks said he was part of a double team on receiver Chris Conley the former chief. But after defensive end George Karloftis disrupted Purdy's throw, Hicks found himself in a better position to make the catch. I turned my eyes back to, Purdy, and there it was, Hicks said, plays like that interception should earn Hicks more opportunities for playing time. Last week marked his third game with defensive snaps. He's also been a valuable member of KC's special teams, he was on the field for the pick because starting safety Justin Reed was dealing with a hand injury. And it turns out the fourth round pick from Washington State was the right man for the moment, that point was underscored by defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolo. some of the things we do here are what he did at Washington State, Spagnolo said. And when we call those certain coverages you can see he can unwind it. It's natural for him. He made a really good play on that. Sunday's game will be Hicks' first time inside Allegiant Stadium. He was high school senior in 2020, the Raiders' first season there after moving from Oakland. That was the season interrupted by COVID-19, and no fans were allowed in the arena. Also, Bishop Gorman didn't play a game that year, so Hicks didn't have a senior season. That didn't prevent him from getting college offers, however. At Washington State he played alongside another future chief, cornerback Joshua Williams, and Hicks High School knows something about prepping players for pro football careers. According to the NFL, Hicks was among eight players from Bishop Gorman on opening day rosters. Many others dot major college rosters, including Hicks' older brother, Kalen, who played four seasons as a safety at the University of Hawaii, they set me up to be where I am right now, Hicks said. I'm a proud alum. One that, Hicks said, supported the hometown NFL team when it relocated from Oakland. But not anymore. The Kansas City Chiefs may look to acquire more talent in their push for a Super Bowl three-peat. On Thursday, the Chiefs sent shockwaves across the NFL after landing wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins in a trade with the Tennessee Titans. The 2025 fifth-round pick they dealt will become a fourth-rounder should the wideout play 60% of snaps for his new team and Kansas City make the Super Bowl. Following the blockbuster trade, it appeared as though the Chiefs would stay quiet ahead of the November 4 trade deadline due to their lack of cap space. Yet one day after the Hopkins deal officially went through, Kansas City made another interesting move that suggests more additions are still to come. According to ESPN's Field Yates, the Chiefs restructured right tackle Jawan Taylor's contract by converting his salary into a signing bonus, thereby freeing up $5.3 million in cap space. The influx of available cash now sets the stage for a second trade, which Kansas City could certainly use, given the state of its injury-riddled roster, healthy wide receivers have been hard to come by in Kansas City. With Rassi Rice reportedly unlikely to play again this season after undergoing surgery to repair his knee, which he injured in week four against the Los Angeles Chargers. Wideout Marquise Hollywood Brown, meanwhile, was placed on injured reserve and is expected to miss the entirety of the regular season due to a shoulder injury he suffered in the Chiefs' preseason opener. More recently, Juju Smith Schuster was ruled out for the Chiefs Raiders game with a sore hamstring while Sky Moore was placed on IR on Thursday. As for star running back Isaiah Pacheco, he's expected to miss six to eight weeks with a fractured fibula.